Hey guys, John from EncoMesh.com. If you've been asking yourself, should I be using Elementor or Gutenberg or should I be using both of them together or how do they work best together, this video is for you. Today I'm going to give you my personal recommendation on what I use for most websites and what I recommend for most people when it comes to using these two amazing page builders together. And long story short, I think the best websites, the most flexible websites will actually be able to use both in the ways that they are designed to be used and where they can be best used on your website. So what I mean by that is I think of it this way. Elementor is used for your headers, your footers, your heavily designed pages and things like pop ups and all the other nice features that it can do for you. Whereas Gutenberg is perfect for long form SEO optimized blog posts where form matters but it's really more about the content that's inside of the of the post itself and the surrounding style to the content can be helped with the gutenberg block plugin you choose to use but at the end of the day there are features within gutenberg that make it perfect for blogging and there are features within elementor that make it perfect for page building and theme building let me show you some of those examples here so here, when I'm writing a blog post, let's say I'm writing a blog post about dog food, I'm doing a dog food tutorial. If I'm writing it in the Elementor page builder, the actual process of blogging is to me a little bit more of a hassle. You're constantly, uh, let's, let's say you put your header out here and then you wanna add some text. Now you need to come back over here, add some text and start writing your text out here. So you've written out a, a couple paragraphs of text, but now if you want to put an image inside of this text block, you have a couple of options. One is you can come in here and use the add media tool to put a picture inside the blog post, but that also limits your flexibility. I'll insert this here. And so now here's an image, but now it looks kind of all funny. I can do that. You're, you're working around a lot to make it look what you want to look like. And if you want to drag an image in, you have to pick at the top or the bottom of that text. It's just not the most intuitive experience for doing long form editing, for long, uh, editing long blog posts. You know, for me personally, I want to be able to go and write out the content and quickly jot down my thoughts and ideas and then edit later and insert images in later and do everything I need to uh, once that initial draft is published. And it's just a little bit more work in Elementor, if I'm being honest. The other thing I'm missing here is context. You know, if I know what my, if my focus keyword is dog food tutorial, I don't exactly know how many times I've used it on this page. I don't know what the density is. And for all this SEO optimization ideas, um, it's a little bit tougher if you're inside of a page builder. Let's flip back over here where we're in the default Gutenberg editor and do kind of the similar um, test here. So let me go ahead and write out some, some text here. All right, so I put a, a couple of uh, pieces of text. If I want to go to the next header, I'm not leaving my keyboard to go and grab the header module. I'm just going to do a backslash and say header, and I can pick whichever header I want. I'll just do a classic header. I can write out a little bit of content here. And if I wanted to add an image in, let's say I, I need an image right here. Every paragraph inside of Gutenberg allows you to insert things in between. So I can come here, look for images, add an image, and quickly go on my way with the default WordPress editor. This I think is a much better experience, even though you don't get that pixel perfect layout. I need to go and kind of preview this on the front end to see if it looks exactly like I want it to. I think that for the flexibility and design here, adding things in and kind of moving things around easily uh, is, is definitely worth it. The other thing that's huge here is if you use SEO plugins like Rank Math or Yoast SEO or any of those, you'll be able to actually see how your post is going as you're developing it. And this is why I write all my blog posts in WordPress itself. And I don't write in a Google doc and then bring it in like some people recommend because I want to make sure that, okay, yay, I'm using my focus keyword in my title. I, I, I can see what's working for me, what's not working as I'm writing it, which gives me a lot of benefits there. So that's a reason why I think blog posts belong in Gutenberg and Elementor pages are not the best for it. Now let's give uh, some, uh, some love over to Elementor when it comes to building out a landing page. So if I want to build a new page and I come here to pages, add new, we'll call this Elementor page and we'll publish it. And let's make a new one and call it Gutenberg page and I'll publish it. Okay. So we have our, our information here. If I want to go into the Elementor editor, now I have this canvas where I can see exactly how things are going to look as I create it. And I can come in here and I don't have to start from scratch. I can go directly in and pull up a homepage just randomly. And now I have a complete control over this. I can drag things around very easily. Uh, it just 
they've done a lot of work at Elementor to make this a very nice design process, which you can definitely feel just from you know, scrolling around and playing with it for a little bit. This is hugely helpful, as well as having all the extensions of what you, what else you can pull in from Elementor Pro or essential add-ons, all the different tools out there to help make this uh, design nicely. On the other hand, here we are with our Gutenberg built page, and you can get a lot of the same outcome here. It just is not quite as easy. So first, let me go and make this a no sidebar and a full width stretch page, and I'll hit update. And let me also disable the header, disable the title, and the, disable the featured image, and I'll hit update one more time. So now if I want to design this out, I'm gonna come in and maybe let's pick from Cubely. And let's pick a row. I'll do a two column row. And now I can, you, you get the idea. Like you're, you've got the entire page layout, but it's not quite as easy as intuitive to kind of grasp what it's going to finally look like on the front end. So let's put an image here and let's put some header text here. Just put kind of some, some silly text here so you can see what a design would look like with Gutenberg. And we'll do a button group, which I do like the button group where you can put two buttons side by side very easily. Let's say sign up or log in. And let's just see how this design looks on the front end because that's what you have to do. We'll view it. And now we can see, okay, well, we kind of got what we asked for. It's full width and stretch. So we need to come back in again and make our container a certain width. So we'll come here to this row. I'll just adjust my container width here and hit update. And we can see now what the changes have done. Okay, so it looks better. It's in, in the right container that, where it should be. So all that is to say that you can get the designs you want in Gutenberg. It's just going to take you a bit more patience and a bit more work to get there. Um, are you going to get some better performance from a Gutenberg block over an Elementor page? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on which plugins you're using, which add-ons you have for Elementor, which add-ons you have for Gutenberg. It's really all kind of up in the air for your particular layout and your particular setup. So all that being said, kind of the takeaway I want you to have from this is if you are concerned about picking the right page builder, whether it is Gutenberg or Elementor or Thrive Architect or anything like that, uh, don't be that alarmed. Everything has a place on your website. It has a particular niche that is going to do best in. I think Gutenberg's niche is in writing those blog posts and adding enough form and beauty in it with the blocks to kind of make it engaging for your readers. Whereas I think the page builders have a kind of a hold on the market for a little while longer until Gutenberg matures, which it will do eventually. But I think page builders are here to stay for at least a couple more years. So if you're thinking about building a website, I would go ahead and get a page builder. Now I have an entire quiz you can take from incomemesh.com slash stack. I'll leave a link in the description below. That'll help you decide what is the right page builder for you. But I think that page builders have a place in the market for a while longer. And um, so go ahead and use the right tools for your job. I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. If you found this helpful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.